It's Saturday, the 7th of May, 2016. This is Glenn Zuckman at Gallery 211 in Santa Ana, California, here on the occasion of Pleasure Objects. I'm joined uh, by the artists of the exhibition, Alyssa Arney and Liz Flynn, and also by the curator, <laughs> Natalie Mix. <Mick. laughs> Uh, Alyssa, Liz, and Natalie, welcome to Agent of Chaos. Hi, it's nice to be too. here. <laughs> so um, here we are at Gallery 211. Tell me about this, this exhibition. Sure. So it started off as kind of a general concept of pleasure objects in general, what humans find entertainment in, whether it's visual or physical consumption. I brought the idea to Natalie. Um, whom I've worked with before on several other projects and she thought it'd be best to focus this particular one on food consumption so that's what we did um, so a lot of the works you'll see within the exhibition are talking about obesity gluttony um, we do a lot of play on words too so for instance we've got health hazards over here which is a little miniature obstacle course uh -huh. that people can <laughs> walk through we've got spilt milk, banana peels, eggshells, going along with the classic idioms, you know, don't uh, cry over spilt milk, don't um, walk on yeah. eggshells. Mm -hmm. um, we've got these kind of ice cream cones of hazard. Some of the objects are actually interactive, so Mama Jim's Pizza was a creation mm -hmm. from Liz. And you can open it up. And actually mm -hmm. kind of interact yeah. with the gems. Yeah, <laughs> the pizza. Kind of lift it up a little There's bit. Like cheese. There's like cheese. So just yeah. completely outrageous. And mm -hmm. luxurious. So we've got the health hazards <laughs> kind of leading to the sort of happy meals and fast food genre of our culture. And then we come over here to our comfort food blanket, another kind of play on words. You can kind of imagine a person sleeping in it like a pigs on a blanket. Um, Tracy Emmons' piece, My Bed, was a huge inspiration for this one. So just thinking about kind of the carnage of um, fast food and I guess cakes and pastries and anything that people want to consume in times of distress. Mm -hmm. um, what else can we say about I it? Know, this piece it mainly addresses the psychological aspect of food, um, just kind of how we go to food for comfort. Uh, usually food that isn't very good for you, mm -hmm. so things like Pop-Tarts, popcorn, mm -hmm. tacos, pie, cookies, things like that. So you're kind of just, you know. Smothered. Yeah, in smothered, you're covering being yourself. slowly destroyed in. by the food mm -hmm. that is trying to comfort you in the moment. Yeah. So, um, my bed was the inspiration for this one. Then this, the inspiration behind this was the FDA's regulated uh, food pyramid that we were all taught probably in the 90s. <laughs> the 90s, yeah. Yes, uh, which is pyramid. inaccurate. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is just kind of several things at once. Um, it's an altarpiece. So as you can see on the floor here, we've got a scale that you would kneel on and kind of pray for the golden uh, idealized body proportions, 36, 24, 36. We've got the triangle slash prism, which is this kind of holy altar. Um, so there's like Catholicism um, undertones. We've got FDA. What else do we want to say? Um, yeah, with this piece, we wanted to address um, how people kind of idealize like the ultimate ideal diet, um, you know, but it's uh, ultimately unattainable, yeah. um, especially with the ideal female form. Mm -hmm. um, just how, you know, the ideal versus the reality of your actual diet and the mm -hmm. food pyramid as well, the one that we were raised on mm -hmm. from the 90s. Um, currently it's different. The FDA has created kind of like a plate looking thing so um, in regards to recommended diet. But with this food pyramid, you know, we have all of the, they call them greens, but essentially they're carbs. Um, so that was supposedly what you were supposed to eat the most of and that was the healthiest. But um, in reality, when you go shopping at the supermarket, it's like Wonder Bread and completely processed starchy foods, um, which are not good for you in excess. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's kind of just, you know, the ideal of eating a well-balanced, you know, healthy meal every day versus the reality of going shopping kind of in the praying, average grocery store. Kind of store. like praying for that ideal weight and yeah. praying for the right solution, the diet. Mm -hmm. um, another thing we were wanting to kind of explore too is just, um, at least for me, I've always kind of struggled with my weight. So trying to remain body positive amidst what the masses are and the and the media are throwing at us as far as like what is ideal, 
normally it's the woman diminished in form is supposed to be attractive, but I wanted to try and remain bo body positive despite all of that propaganda mm -hmm. being thrown at us. Yeah, and I think that's what a lot of people deal with. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. they'll get and it. And to help you maintain ideal form, our next item is the gigantic, <laughs> the gigantic donut hole. Yeah, <laughs> this is funny because, so again, a plan where it's the donut hole. So this is like, first of all, Klaus Oldenburg, um, inspiration as well as lounge culture and drug culture so you can actually as and a, the Simpsons too right yeah yeah, yeah. The, of yeah the lardo donut but yeah people can actually sit within this piece and you know hopefully when they're sitting here they can have a conversation discourse going on about like what they think the exhibition is about or maybe they think about a time when they were at a diner eating a donut with their friends whatever they want to make this zone for themselves, it can be that for them. We're just trying to create like a sort of safe space for that uh, to exist in. Mm -hmm. And then over there, we can see how this relates to the drug and lounge culture with the, uh -huh. the alcohol and the caffeine. And we've got lines of sugar and salt, as well as a syringe filled with sprinkles and a spoon filled with little golden sprinkled pellets. Um, again, kind of thinking this particular um, installation or arrangement is talking about how food actually can surpass nutritional value into a more deadly zone especially if you're like diabetic or you're bulimic or you're anorexic or you're binge eater you know de uh, food consumption with high um, doses of these things can be detrimental to your health and so we're thinking about those things when we created that arrangement over there so, so Natalie, tell me about co coming to this show and working with these artists. Well, Alyssa Arnie and um, Alyssa Arnie and Liz Flynn are amazing artists. They uh, work with a diverse set of media, and for this exhibition, they use the crochet practice. And I think what they really accomplish is making art more accessible. This exhibition, the Pleasure Objects exhibition, is very accessible. Um, it invites everybody. Um, to come and play with the art and uh, it's an interactive uh, installation too so it really invites you to touch the works which is usually uh, not common in fine art gallery spaces um, yeah and they really accomplished to make a whimsical statement on you know push the boundaries of what craft is you know you have these certain notions of what craft is and what fine art is and they do really blur the boundaries and invite you to um, a discussion that that can be open as um, it has never been before so we're all excited and um, yeah can, can you talk about working with fiber what sure. so did the did the concept come first and then fiber or have you been working in fiber for a long time or I'm a printmaker by major I graduated from the John Heron School of Art and Design and I moved out to California and I was so intimidated by the practice at first. Um, my mother actually crocheted and embroidered and all of those needlework um, forms, but I finally like decided to try knitting three years ago. And I was doing that for a while and just making scarves and simple projects. And then when I met Liz at the ACMA where we both interned, um, she was like, oh, you should really try crochet. It's a much easier form. And so we started doing crochet kind of about the same time so about a year and a half ago mm -hmm. and um, I think it definitely is in line with thinking about gender roles so yes okay so first of all women in the kitchen women yes. um, doing needlework yes. arts yeah. um, we kind of wanted to take this format and and dissolve the bifurcation between what craft art is versus fine art because it seems like within the hegemony of the art world there's always been like the woman arts as secondary it's always been pushed into another museum off the side and it's like no this is this has merit this has value there's a lot of skill involved and if you're talking about things like this it certainly has merit in the contemporary art world too so gender roles we're thinking about we're going to take a a craft that was assigned towards women and you know show the best parts of it I think that was my intention well I was also thinking that that uh, fiber and culinary arts are both 
um, women's work in mm -hmm. that traditional mm -hmm. sense, mm -hmm. but that they're also very sort of sharing, culturally immersive. You know, yeah. we, we might say that a painting is heroic, but mm -hmm. we wouldn't say that somebody made a painting with love. And yet, mm -hmm. when we talk about preparing a meal with mm -hmm. love, and mm -hmm. that they do seem more maybe generous and connective and, mm -hmm. and perhaps not heroic in the way that, mm -hmm. that other media sometimes mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that some of the issues that we're talking about are kind of darker themes, but when, yeah, we yes. present them, yeah. <laughs> when we present them in these kind of plushy toys, it seems more accessible. It's like a little toy you can like hold on to, like a stress ball that you can relieve, you know, your tension about this or like t broaching darker themes and subjects and having that accessibility within our work. I think that's kind of inherent in this form. And plus it's like literally soft. You can sit <laughs> in the thing and it's it's comforting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is pretty comforting. In it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um and then there was actually one more installation. It's the Afu ah. aphrodisiac. So again now we're thinking about um sex and food. Mm -hmm. And the positioning of it on the wall I think was a big thing for us because this is a society filled with sex shaming and we wanted to just Bam! Like put it up the first, on the wall, first thing yeah, see. so that it's no longer this taboo conversation. It's like, oh yeah, you can have you can have food within your sex life, and we can talk about these things, um, euphemisms yep. with food. Hi. Hello. Hi there. Welcome. Oh, and I guess it's six o'clock, <laughs> yes, and we have is. an opening tonight, yes. don't we? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Come appropriate in. enough. Yes. Yeah. Uh. Um, Should I close this? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Alyssa, Liz, and Natalie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Yes. Yes. <laughs>